Once, a group of criminals were sent on a dangerous mission to a black hole. The only occupants of the spaceship were the criminals, and they encountered numerous challenges as they journeyed towards their destination. Monty, a former father and lover, was part of the mission. The mission was led by Dr. Dibbs, who performed experiments on the prisoners, utilizing them to test various experiments in space. The prisoners were compelled to participate in these experiments, and were also subjected to Dr. Dibbs' sexual advances. The prisoners revolted against Dr. Dibbs, leading to a series of violent incidents that resulted in the deaths of all except Monty and Willow. Hey guys, welcome to our channel, Mystery Recaps. Today we will recap a 2019 science fiction adventure movie named High Life. To know what happens later, keep on watching the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. In a far off corner of the galaxy, there was a tiny space station where a baby named Willow lived. Willow's father, Monty, would communicate with her through the speakers while he worked on the ship, making repairs and keeping them both alive in the lonely void of space. Despite the difficulties of life in this isolated corner of the universe, Monty devoted himself fully to his daughter, caring for her as best he could. One day, as Willow played in her playpen, she became upset as the movie playing on her screen came to an end. Her cries filled the air, reaching Monty through his spacesuit and causing him to drop a vital tool out of reach. Monty was momentarily frozen, staring out into the emptiness of space, but was brought back to reality by the sound of Willow's babbling. Willow watched as Monty entered the airlock room, removing his spacesuit and performing the daily tasks of caring for their little corner of the universe. Monty tended the garden and prepared food for Willow, chatting with her as he went about his work. Despite the many challenges he faced, Monty remained devoted to Willow, determined to do his best for her, no matter what. As the day went on, Monty faced one challenge after another. The power went out in the hallway, an alarm blared from afar, and Monty was faced with the difficult task of disposing of the bodies of those who had come before them. Through it all, Monty remained strong, caring for Willow and doing his best to keep them both alive. Despite the difficulties of life in this lonely corner of the universe, Monty was determined to find meaning and purpose in their existence. He entertained the idea of ending both of their lives, but ultimately decided against it, determined to find a way to keep Willow safe and protect her from the dangers of their surroundings. As Willow slept, Monty sang to her, watching over her and feeling her heartbeat and breath. In the end, Monty was left alone with his thoughts facing the challenges of life in this remote corner of the universe with a sense of resolve and determination. Despite all the obstacles he faced, Monty remained devoted to Willow, determined to do everything in his power to keep her safe and help her thrive. What do you think? Will Monty be able to stick to his words? Let us know in the comments section. Despite receiving videos from Earth, Monty was unable to communicate with his home planet and felt as though the videos were a form of manipulation to make them think they could return. He reflects on his past, including a traumatic childhood incident involving the death of his dog and a close friend. Back on Earth, a professor is being interviewed, speaking out against the inhumane treatment of death row inmates who are sent to space to be experimented on without any communication or chance of return. Meanwhile, Monty has found solace in the space station, taking pleasure in teaching his daughter Willow how to walk. He fondly remembers his former companions, especially Boise, a red-headed woman who he imagines lived a happy life on Earth, despite her impoverished background. Like Monty, most of the space station's inhabitants were former death row inmates or life sentence prisoners, given a chance to serve science instead. However, tensions rise as the years pass by, and Monty and Boise get into a fight. They are both taken to the infirmary, where Dr. Dibbs stitches up Monty's arm. Boise accuses the doctor of knowing that they will never return to Earth, and questions the ethics of the experiments they are conducting. As part of the experiment, Dr. Dibbs takes samples from the male inmates in exchange for recreational pills, but Monty refuses to participate. The ship's pilot, Nansen, grows curious about the experiments and asks Dr. Dibbs what happens if they are successful, but the doctor avoids the question. Later, Dr. Dibbs retreats to a private room known as the box, where she uses a device for personal use. The uncertainty and intrigue surrounding the experiments and the space station only adds to the unease and confusion experienced by Monty and the others as they drift further away from the Earth uncertain of their fate. After the event, Monty catches a glimpse of Dr. Dibbs emerging from the mysterious and off-limits the box. He wonders if it is appropriate for her to spend time there, but she confidently assures him that it is. What do you think? Are Monty's concerns justified? Let us know in the comments. Despite the rumors and whispers among the inmates that label Dr. Dibbs as a witch, Monty offers her a compliment in an attempt to lift her spirits. He may not fully comprehend her fixation with the experiment, but he wants to be supportive nonetheless. Once Monty tended to the plants in the garden of the ship, along with his friend, to Kearney. He enjoyed being in the garden, as it reminded him of home, and to Cherney, who missed his son, would often ask Monty about his family. Monty, who had only his dog as family, would reply with a sad smile. 
One day, Dr. Dibbs discovered that the ship's captain, Chandra, had developed leukemia due to radiation exposure. Monty was grateful to have good genes that prevented him from getting affected by the radiation. The crew was on a mission to conduct fertility experiments and collect energy from a black hole. As the journey reached its midpoint, the crew prepared for the ship's deceleration. Monty helped strap his companions to their seats, including Boise, who was protective over the pregnant Electra. Days after the deceleration, Ettore made a move on Nansen, who rejected him. Ettore was disappointed and decided to sleep in the garden with Tichurni. In the meantime, Boise took supplies from the clinic, while Mink kept watch. Electra attempted to undo Dr. Dibb's insemination on her, but eventually died after giving birth due to radiation. The inmates gathered as Dr. Dibbs sealed Electra's body in the morgue. Boise blamed Dr. Dibbs for Electra's death and was upset. Chandra suffered a stroke and was bedridden, and the alarms blared, indicating that the life support systems needed to be sustained. As Chandra was unable to do it, Dr. Dibbs sliced her finger to take the captain's transceiver to input the report herself. Monty later collected Boise and Mink, telling them it was almost lights out. Boise started singing, mocking him, but her face saddened as the song ended. Chandra became bedridden after his stroke, and Dr. Dibbs comforted him, massaging his legs to prevent atrophy. But Chandra refused to live with his body as his prison and wished to be euthanized. Dr. Dibbs obliged and stayed with him until he was gone. In the dead of night, Atori sneaked into the sleeping quarters of the girls. He cast aside her blanket and began to violate her with his touch. She awoke with a blood-curdling scream, waking Mink, who was soon met with a fist from Atori. Nansen tried to intervene but was beaten down. The girls were helplessly bound to their beds. Monty and Tichurni heard the commotion and rushed in to aid the girls. Atori was no match for Monty's strength who pummeled him until Tichurni pulled him away. Mink took her chance to escape, plunging a piece of broken glass into Tori's face. The aftermath saw Dr. Dibbs checking in on Boise, who was determined not to have children. Dr. Dibbs revealed her own dark past, confessing to an attempt at ending her own life. In the wake of the altercation, Dr. Dibbs doubled the sedatives of the inmates, ensuring they would sleep soundly. As she made her round, she stopped at Monty's room and found Nansen still awake. Dr. Dibbs expressed her fondness for Monty, who she saw was the only one not after anything from her. With Monty sedated, Dr. Dibbs took advantage of him and inseminated Boise with his fluids. Months later, Boise gave birth to a healthy baby girl, but was plunged into depression at the realization that she was a part of Dr. Dibbs' experiment. On the other hand, Dr. Dibbs was overjoyed. Years later, Willow, the baby girl, had grown into a teenager. Monty awoke to find her in his bed, and upon scolding her, he noticed the bloodstains that indicated her reaching womanhood. Willow confessed to reading Monty's records and learned of his past crime. As for the journey in space, Nansen was troubled by the expedition to a black hole, but had no choice as the only pilot. Boise, however, had different plans, striking Nansen with a shovel and taking her place in the shuffle. Boise's journey was cut short, as the molecular cloud redirected the shuttle into the black hole. Back on the spaceship, Mink blamed Dr. Dibbs for the tragedy and struck her with the shovel. Monty took the shovel from Mink and accidentally killed her. Dr. Dibbs, driven to the brink, revealed to Monty that he was the father of the baby before rejecting herself into space without a spacesuit. Monty was too late to save her and harmed himself in grief. In the end, only Monty and Tichurni remained. Tichurni shared his initial intentions to bring glory to his family, but ultimately died, leaving Monty alone with his thoughts and the haunting memory of the events that took place. Monty and Willow were on a spaceship, with only each other for company. After burying his friend, Monty took the baby out of the incubator and slowly grew to love her as he saw her healthy and full of hope. The spaceship was in disarray, and the system detected another ship nearby. Monty entered the other ship to investigate, but found it in utter chaos, with only dogs as the living creatures. Back in their spaceship, Willow demanded a puppy, but Monty refused. Later, the black hole produced a ring of yellow light, and with nothing to lose, Monty and Willow prepared their shuttle, ready to face the unknown. They said farewell to their home and held hands as they went into the black hole, facing their fate together. So guys, that's it for today. Check out this video on the screen to watch this amazing movie 